What's in the box? Pain. Oh, hello there! Do you want to lose friends and alienate people? Do you need to win games of model soldiers to live? Do you have no morals, no scruples, and do you refuse to shower? Well, if you haven't read the title of the video yet, I want to introduce you to the meanest, the smelliest, the most deadly army I've ever created for the Horus Heresy tabletop, and I'm gonna prove it. My name is Mechanid. Let's get started. The strongest army. As thanks for reaching 1000 subscribers and beyond, I have decided to celebrate by committing an act of evil. Mercifully, the quote unquote strongest list in 30k is something that has not seen much discussions in any circles that I frequent at least. And when brought up, the idea is often derided as being the absolute meme that it is. However, with some inspiration from a good friend and some ideas from the comments, I've come up with a frankly diabolical, diabolical list that will, and I assure you of this, fucking flatten anything that it is put up against. So let's get into this mess. The Legion Choice, Death Guard. An uncommon choice for the most powerful list. I'd wager most players would say Alpha Legion, uh, an Imperial Fist, Stone Gauntlet, or Dark Angels to be the pick. Or failing that, a triple stack of Ultramarines Fulmentari pre-nerf. But the Death Guard Legion gives us some great tools with which to inflict pain upon our enemies. First, the Legion trait. It lets us move and still count as stationary for the purposes of shooting, provided we don't run. And it gives us a unique right of war which allows this madness in the first place. Speaking of madness, the right of war. The, the reaping. reaping. This Death Guard specific right of war lets us do a couple of silly things. First, it lets us take rad grenades on characters, which is cool, but we don't really care about that as no one is going to get into melee with us in the first place. Also, Legion veteran squads may be taken as troops choices, but we don't care about that either. Second, models in this detachment can't run. We don't care about this either because cardio is gay. Third, we can't deep strike, outflank, or make subterranean assaults, and we can't take any unit that must deploy in those ways. We also don't care about this. Fourth, and finally, the Reaping lets us take heavy support squads as non-compulsory troops. And the clever ones among you will now understand what is about to happen and no, you can't stop me. Onto the list. The HQ, a single Centurion upgraded to a Delegatus. This lets us unlock the right of war and gives us a rally effect, but we're not going to need that because we are crashing this game with no survivors. He's your Warlord and give him the Stoic Defender Warlord trait for an extra shooting reaction and gives the shooting weapons that he's in the squad with pinning. Take Rad Grenades because you're cancerous and give him an appropriate name like Mr. Gross. Elites, a six strong Apothecary detachment, all bare bones. They are here to give 5 plus feel no pain, and that's it. I would like to have got a 7th for being the fitting number of Nurgle, and for reasons you'll see later, but hey, whatever, couldn't afford it. Another 6 strong Tech Marine Covenant, each with a Cognis Signum. Again, I wish I could have afforded a 7th, but one squad will have to make do without. These guys are here to grant Night Vision, and to give up their shooting to grant plus 1 Ballistic skill to the squad that they're in, and this is what we call foreshadowing. Fast attack. Disregard this, as boys, we are going slow today. Troops. Two identical tactical marine squads. Ten guys, bare bones, but with artificer armor on the sergeants. These guys are here to get onto objectives and sit there. That's all they need to do. Then, four lots of identical heavy support squads, each with an augury scanner and every man with a last cannon. Now you see where we're going. Heavy support. Another three full ten man heavy support squads, all with last cannons, with power armor on the sarge and an augury scanner on the squad. And that is it. That's the list, and when laid out like this, you can see the main selling points. 70 LAS cannons. Jesus Christ. When you encounter a problem, just apply 70 LAS cannons to it and the problem will go away. If you want to scale this list further into 4K and beyond, just keep adding heavy support squads until you can no longer look at yourself in the mirror. Pain. I mean, what makes this list so good? 
This list does one thing very well, and that is to wipe your opponent off the table with massed anti-tank shooting. The Strength 9 Last Cannon will instant death even battle-hardened troops or resilient Legion infantry like Iron Hands, and will allow you to delete whole squads, even Dreadnoughts, in a single round of shooting. With two shooting reactions, any unit that attempts to whittle down or kill a unit that is within the range of the Last Cannons risks getting wiped off the board in return. In this way, the heavy support squads can trade up, earning their points back even if they are taken off the board. Skew. This list is a perfect example of a skew list. A skew list is any list that skews towards a particular unit or playstyle as opposed to having a balance of units. Skew lists tend to be powerful as they lean into the idea of threat saturation, having too many threats for your opponent to counter and using a particular strong unit in excess to overwhelm the foe. This does mean, however, that if an opponent has a strong counter, or enough of them, this skew list can completely fall apart. I hope to talk more about this in a future video, as list building is a really interesting part of this game. But for now, other examples of skew lists would be a Fury of the Ancients or Dreadnoughts list, or an Oops or Terminators Pride of the Legion list, or something like an Imperial Knights list with multiple Lords of War choices. Technically speaking, all tank lists are also skew lists, as your opponent needs specific weapons to be able to hurt the tanks, but with how weak tanks are in 2.0, it's less of an issue than, say, taking all Dreadnoughts. As with anything in this game, a massive IT DEPENDS asterisk hangs over any list when discussing if it is a skew list or not. This is because it's up to the players in question to self-police and to determine what level of skew they are happy with. Same goes for their opponents. It also incorporates counters to most common outs to shooting armies. By having a Cognis Signum and an Augury Scanner in most units, night fighting will hardly affect you, as you'll still be shooting at Ballistic Skill 4 or better. And with so many free interceptor reactions, even Deep Strikers will be ripped to shreds as they deploy, meaning that bringing in Assault Troops to tie up your gunline will be even harder. Likewise, with Augury Scanners, it'll be very hard for Infiltrators to get close to your gunline. Also, six of the heavy support squads have an Apothecary, giving them a 5 plus feel no pain. Counterplay. In regards to countering this army, your options are few. You can try and tie up the squads in melee, but that requires you to either get across the board in the first place, or close the gap via deep striking or other alternate deployment methods. Unless cover is so dense that you can stay out of visual contact, you are going to get shot full of holes as any assault troops try to run across the board. Or, if you drop in, the fact that nearly every unit can make a bonus interceptor reaction means that any dropping in units will have to be incredibly durable to survive the barrage as they hit the board. You could potentially try to out durability the army. Using massed ranks of terminators could get you there, but with so many last cannons, a single failed invulnerable save means instant death, even for battle hardened troops. Dreadnoughts may be a shout, but again, the same problem comes around. It's 10 last cannons hitting on twos, wounding on twos for most dreads, and then it's just a matter of a 5 plus invulnerable save. Either way, the odds are not in your favour. You could try to outrange the last cannons, turtling your army away from the Death Guard. You could use Nemesis Bolters to try and pin down the enemy so that they can't react, allowing other units to attack them without fear of reprisal. Or you could use artillery to attack from out of line of sight. Scorpius Missile Tanks are easily the best in this regard. These two strategies are the most viable for dealing with the army. However, you just need to kill enough Death Guard before they march doggedly forwards and ram a last cannon down your throat. Line Units This list only has two, and these are the weak part of the army and are easily the most vulnerable part as well. For the Death Guard side, the plan is simple. Kill anything that could threaten them before they get killed in turn. And for the opponent, you have to find a way to neutralize these line units before they score, and then hopefully score enough so that you can get out ahead before the last cannons come and wipe you off the face of the earth. Again, there's not many great options, and that's one of the reasons why this list is so strong. However, reasons why you shouldn't do this. Because it's not within the spirit of the game. Horus Heresy is primarily a narrative game, and I'm confident in saying that rocking up with the goal of tabling your opponent turn one is antithetical to that spirit. This list doesn't include any Legion-specific units, meaning that it's very shallow when it comes to Legion flavour. Aside from the right of war, the Legion trait, and maybe the paint job, there's nothing about this list that screams Death Guard, and is one of the things that goes against the spirit of the game. I'm not saying that you have to include Legion-specific units to play a Legion, however, one of the main reasons to pick a Legion in the first place is for those units, either you like the style, the flavouring, or how they play on the tabletop. So not playing them feels like a great waste when it comes to picking a Legion. Next, you will win with this list, I can assure you of it. But it will get dull very, very fast. 
It's lots of the same units, and they'll all play the same, and they'll all do the same thing every game, repeating and repeating forever. That is, provided you can find people to play with you and actually put up with this nonsense. Finally, and going by GW prices, it's going to be pretty steep at best. Assuming you go with Games Workshop prices, my guess for this list will cost you at least £190 for four boxes of Tacticals, Mark III for Death Guard of course, and that will cover all your infantry. £203 for seven boxes of Last Cannons, £94.50 for three Apothecary boxes, £183 for six Mark III Tech Marines, £27.50 for any console mini to turn into a Delegatus. Then whatever you want for paint on top of that for a total of £698 on the nose. Jesus Christ. For that price, you could buy a Warhound Titan with arm guns and still have enough money for your self-respect. In summary, this list will bring nothing but pain and misery to the enemy, which as a Death Guard player is exactly what you need to do. If you really want this list, it'll be in the pinned comment down below. If some absolute mad lad does make this list, I'd love to see it, but please don't go out of your way and spend your money for a meme, holy sh don't do that. This video was a ton of fun to make, and I'd really like to say thanks to all of you for giving me the ideas in the comments below and my friends that helped me out. What's the meanest list that you can think of? I'd love to know if you've got an idea that can beat this. And I'd love to do one of these lists for each of the legions, or maybe if there's any ways to make this list even worse. Let me know in the comments below. My name is Mechanid. Thanks for watching. These guys are here to grant night vision and to give up their shooting to grant a plus one ballistic squill. Squill?